What makes it such a scary thing is how much you don't know. I'm not ever sick. And in the last 18 months, I've had pneumonia three times. That was a really rough few months. Right now, crews are still working to put out the flames from a natural gas rig explosion. This has been burning since 10 o'clock last night. No one was injured, and I wouldn't. Last week in the Texas Panhandle, this happened. Oil and gas workers were fracking in Hemp Hill County, Texas. But in this case, this happened last week, something went wrong and the casing failed. A seven inch wide pipe failed catastrophically. I noticed a stake, a, a wooden stake that had some orange tape on it. I really thought that they were marking off streets and divisions because they were getting ready to build again. But as I learned after the fact, they had just surveyed the land. So what I actually saw were the markers showing where the drilling was going to take place. The first that I found out about that was when I looked out the window and I saw a bulldozer leveling the ground. This is my home and you just stuck something basically in my backyard without consulting me, informing me, anything. Uh, I watched them work on it that day and by the end of the day, the, the shape and dimensions of the area they had leveled out, I knew what it was. It was it was a fracking site. My neighbors and I talked collectively. We didn't like what we heard, that they were gonna put four wellheads there, so close to our house. They don't have a sense of ethics. You have to remember you're dealing with an entity, not a human being. I haven't got a lot against them in that respect, but it's strictly business. When they made it personal, that's where I had a problem. They came into the, the back of our neighborhood, 300 feet from the back fence line. That's so intrusive. They did not feel like good neighbors. It's a very common theme in their PR marketing, but having gone through that experience with them, they were hard to deal with. These black and red Angus cattle. We also produce natural gas. That's how we make our living and, and that's how we can pass. The early phases, you know, a lot of banging and clanging. This is the fracking nightmare. This is what people have to listen to 24-7. They'd have generators running, they had semis running, and the big metal drill bits. When they bang against each other, it would startle me out of bed. Oh, and they had lights up the, the rig, and it shone straight into my bedroom. It was about seven to eight months of activity going on back there. We always had methane in the air. Uh, there were other chemical and diesel smells during the fracking. And then there was some kind of white powdery stuff that would go in the air, but one particular time, it, it settled in the crevices, all up and down the front of my car. So before I went to work, there's a car wash just up the street. So I went there to wash that stuff off and black paint came off with it. So I took the paint off my car. We are dealing with a lot of concern about industrial accidents, fire or explosion, uh, that sort of thing, this close to a house. We are dealing with something that has a lot of toxins that can leak out into not just the air, but into the water itself. A day of cleaning up at this gas drilling site in the northern tier. Now people who live near here can only wonder about possible long-term effects of today's leak. It's our top story. Well, that's a couple of thousand feet of, of piping since it's a slant well. And at any time, we don't know what's leaking out of that. They gave us a lot of assurances about the method and the technology that, that made it very durable and strong. But if something was leaking out, we wouldn't know until it was too late. It scares the crap out of me. I mean, I've seen the wells explode. I've seen them on fire. I've seen the town evacuations. 
relative good distance from towns, but yet they still evacuate the entire town. And I'm like, you know, this thing is 300 feet from me. If it goes, I'm dead. It can't be close to people. If you're going to evacuate a mile for the protection of people, then don't drill within a mile of residences. We were told we would have, I think, close to 300 houses altogether. A park, bike trails, you know, a, an actual planned community. That's what I put my money down to live in. But the minute you put a gas well on any property, you're done. The biggest failure, though, to me, is our town. We had ordinances for Ponder that prevented this stuff from ever happening. It was about six months after I moved in, the ordinances changed to allow this. We've gone from a very cute, quiet little neighborhood to many rent houses, many foreclosures. They couldn't sell and they had to get out. Some of it was health issues. There's a lot of anecdotal stories about um, what's happening to people and their, their health. and. I very much want to see hard data. I don't feel comfortable taking the risk of waiting until there's enough data to find out that I was being hurt all along. These companies that are doing the fracking, they have a very different assessment of how much risk they're willing to take than those of us who have to look forward to a life of consequences. They were trying to assure me about how safe the wells were and this kind of thing. And I told them about the boy, I'll never forget this day. It was right in the middle of the fracking. I saw this big white plume of smoke and the stench was there. You know, I call it the fracking smell. I was talking to my aunt, I was sitting in the driveway and the, a boy across the street, he's running as fast as he can. Clearly he's practicing a track or something. Full speed and I'm just envisioning his lungs breathing in so deep and bringing all that crap into his body. You know, and, and I told these people, I said, you know, you and I are gonna die of something weird in 10 years, and they're gonna blame it on old age. I said, but what about this boy? When he's 26 and he wants to start a family and he can't because he's sterile, or he has neurological damage, or, you know, renal failure, you know, pick one of the millions of things that could go wrong. I said, what then? And they just kind of gave, they had, they had no response. I said, you all don't know what you're doing. You're killing people. You just don't know it yet. In the US, in, in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas, uh, the Dakotas, th there's always been early in the fights an argument that it'll be different here. And that, that may be because the law's different. It may be because the type of shale they're dealing with is different. But the argument is always, it's going to be different here. And it always ends up looking very much the same. Uh, pollutants and noise, industrial truck traffic, encroaching upon homes and causing people to feel that their quality of life is being brought down for the gain of these outside interests. It's kind of like a loss of innocence. You know, you hop through your merry little life doing your thing and, and then you are exposed to a massive corporation just, you know, running over everybody with no regard. And you're changed forever. It's not good. <laughs>